stamper. Sorry, I'm running a little bit late. Was just uh, trying to get everything set up for today's video. And uh, so it took me a minute, but today we're going to be using uh, this beautiful stamp set called Garden Birdhouses. And the cards that we will be using, making, are um, this card, which uses a paper piecing technique. The second card we'll make is here. And here is the third card. <clears throat> um, so just really bright and fun. And uh, I mean, who doesn't love to watch birds and um, watch them build their nests? So um, before we get started, though, I wanted to show you my pre-order. Give me one second. <clears throat> So next month is Celebration. I should start with that first of all. So here's a new Celebration catalog, which I have available for my customers. So if you haven't gotten yours, please let me know and I'll give it to you. Um, so I did, was able to order a couple of Celebration sets. Um, so this one is free with a $100 order and it's gorgeous. We're gonna be using this one next month to make some beautiful cards. And um, then this is free designer series paper that goes with a new punch that's going to be in the um, new mini catalog that's coming out uh, and also a stamp set. But anyway, um, so I got this for free with a $50 order. So that's Celebration. And... Like I said, we have a new mini catalog, um, which goes live August 3rd and is full of really fun stuff. Um, some of the stamp sets I got was this one called Welcoming Woods, which will make really beautiful technique cards. Uh, one second. <clears throat> And what sort of goes with it is this new beautiful timber 3D embossing folder. And I'm looking forward to playing with those. Then we have a really pretty stamp set called Gorgeous Leaves. And it has um, some really beautiful dyes. Hi, hey, Carol, uh, that go with it. Um, still working on putting them all together, but um, really like this a lot. Looking forward to playing with it. Probably next month I'll also be showing you Nature's Harvest. Hey, welcome Carol. Um, which is a beautiful stamp set and has some really gorgeous dyes that go with it. Um, there's another set but I somehow misplaced it of these dyes and like I said we're going to be playing with that next month at Stamp Club. So uh, we meet the third Friday, and I really hope that you can come in person. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start on today's cards, Garden Birdhouse. Um, so just take a regular half sheet of um, basic white cardstock, and I am... Scored this at four and a quarter. And we're going to be using the new um, soft pastels for this card. Um, they've had pastel pastels in the past, I don't know, maybe five years ago, but they brought them back. And um, so I'm going to show you how to use those today, at least one technique with those, which is a lot of fun. Uh, but we're not going to use this card base. We're going to stamp on a quarter sheet because um, we're going to be using watercolor. And this original one uh, kind of got warped because it got wet. And so to help it from doing that, you can stamp on this panel and then adhere it. And it won't get warped like this. So that's what we're going to do. Um, all right, so I went ahead. I also wanted to show you how I did this with my Stamparatus because now you don't have to use your Stamparatus 
for this card, but it just makes it more accurate, just a lot faster, and um, especially if you're doing several, um, it makes it really nice. So I went ahead and pre-positioned these, and the way that I did that was I took my original card and picked a spot, and then I just set these on top of the, of the card and pushed down, and um, that's how I got that positioning. So I'll show you on the next step how I did that exactly. So I'm going to just put my magnet down here because I know that there's no, um, there's not a stamp there. You can't put the magnet where the stamp's going to go. So now I'm taking my memento pad, which is my favorite black, and inking this up. And so the really nice thing about using a Stamparatus is that if you don't get a crisp image the first time, you can do it a second time. So, uh, but that looks perfect. And part of the reason is I have a brand new tuxedo memento pad um, and it's do doing a lot better than my old one did, which was not doing well. And so you can just wipe off the excess. This is, I think it's called the deluxe mat or something for the Stamparatus. And I like it for the Stamparatus and I also just like stamping on it. It's really nice. So I see we have another person on. Welcome. All right, so there's that. Um, <clears throat> it just occurred to me. I don't have a cleanup pad, so I guess I'll just make one out of my uh, paper towel here. <laughs> All right, um, so the next step of this card is um, I need another. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Um, the old-fashioned way, I think, which is to put it on a block. So there's that block. Oh, there it is. Just looking for another one of those. And I need these two, so let me get these two off. I'll set this aside. I'm going to use it on another card, so there we go. And, yeah, sorry, it's taking me so long here. All right, so my next one. I am just going to stamp it all the way up, but I'm going to cover it with my birdhouse. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. And let me get a little. Now if you notice, I am putting these down. Yeah, I guess you can't even see. I'm setting these down and then picking them up with the acrylic block. And when you do that, then they don't get, sometimes they get wonky bent weird so um actually i didn't even need this one all right so this is the bigger one i'm going to put it over here and over here this was a smaller one but i already stamped it i forgot so i'm just going to clean it off and okay what else? I need some grass, so let me get the grass out. I'm normally set up better, but we had since we had Stamp Club here yesterday, I took everything apart like a Dumbo, so now I'm having to put it all back together. And I'm just stamping a little grass in there to kind of um, fill it out. And also while we're at it, I just remembered... So that's it on the front, and we're going to color it in a minute. Um, we need a bird, but i got to do the birdhouse first. But I did stamp on the inside of this one. So I want to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do the pole again. Now this pole, you just want to line it up with the edge of your card, and that's how you can get it straight. 
Um, and you don't want to be too close to the edge because you want the birdhouse to be on the top. So there's the pole. And I need the little, little flower. And I'm going to put grass on the other side. And there we go. That's it for the inside, except for I just made a boo-boo. Oh, well. Um, and I need the bird, but I'll get that in a minute. Um, so I wanted to show you. I went ahead and stamped. So this is called paper piecing when you stamp uh, an image on designer series paper and then you cut it out so i st went ahead and stamped the image and then i cut it out so you can cut yours out and uh, this paper is on sale this month um, 15 percent off um, and there's about i don't know six or eight papers that are on sale so you really want to take advantage of that um, this is particularly good for paper piecing because just the small images just really look nice so I used the taller birdhouse on the inside. And so I'm just going to set it down for a minute, eyeball it. I'm going to get my bird out, which I used this one. The little There's actually three birds in this stamp set. Super cute. And I'm going to go ahead and... stamp that bird so I'm just there we go eyeballing it there okay there's that bird and the bird on the front I used this taller one which sort of looks like a woodpecker house to me and I'm just gonna set it there move it and put my bird on top all right Good. So now we're fully stamped, and I'm going to show you how to use the blends, the pastels, sorry. Um, so you just take a little piece of paper for your palette. I used coated paper. I also used just regular paper, but I felt like it soaked it in too much, so, um, but you can use either. And the three colors that I used, I used this purple. So I'll use that first. Um, this is chalk, basically. Um, so you don't want to get it wet straight on the chalk, but you can rub it on paper. Like I said, this is coated, so it's not really uh, rubbing in very well. I'll show you the difference. This is not coated paper. So you can do it either way. And then you just want to take one of your water painters I used the fine tip there's three different tip sizes and you just fill these with water this one's ready to go I like to kind of squeeze it out on my paper towel just to make sure it's good and wet and um, then you just ink it up and start watercoloring so you can I mean you can use anything but I did just want to show you the new pastels so and like I said you can use either one when I did this I kind of was a sloppy painter because this pastels are so light they're I mean they're chalk and any if you've stamped with chalk inks before you know that they're very uh, soft and that's really one of the attractions of um, using pastels so it's intentionally soft color um, so therefore I'm just being sort of sloppy here and so you can just see the color when I'm done. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and do the inside. Flowers while I'm at it. And so what's really nice about these pastels is that they coordinate with the Stamping Up colors 
So therefore, they're going to coordinate with the purple that's already in my birdhouse. All right, and then to clean this, you just squish it. Squish some water out and just wipe it off. And you're ready for your next color. So our next color is going to be uh, this apple green. And you know, I think I like it better on regular paper, so I'm just going to do that. Getting it wet. And do some messy painting. I mean, you know, it's watercolor, so it's not supposed to be perfect. It is a little dry, so I want to get it wet. There we go. Need a little more chalk. So when you're done, I don't have any handy at the table here, but when you're done with the pastels, um, you should set it with a fixative, um, like a cheap hairspray is works really well. Um, and that'll keep the chalk ink from rubbing off. And it, it surprisingly does nothing to your paper. Like you'd think if you spray it with hairspray, you'd see like a big... Um, hairspray mess, but you really don't, so, um, anyway, so I'll have to just do that later, and actually, I didn't even have any cheap hairspray, so I used my expensive hairspray, and it worked just fine, but, you know, if you're going to make a lot of these, you probably don't want to use your really nice stuff, just buy some cheap, all right, so there's that, and I'm going to do the tree up here. I just did the same color. All right, and the reason, like I said, I really like using these chalk markers on this card is because the paper is really soft, and so this gives a really soft ink that looks really good with the birdhouse paper, which we'll see that when we come together. All right, that looks good, and so all I really have left is the bird and the pole. And the pole, I used this, which I think is actually another green, but sort of looks gray, grayish green. It's probably, uh, what color is it anyway? Did they say on here? Yeah, it's actually mossy metal. That's what I thought, but it looks, on this pole, it sort of looks gray. So that's what I did. Now you could, I mean, you could like mix mix the colors up if you wanted to. I'm not going to today, but if you wanted different shades, you could mix them just like a regular watercolor. All right, so that's good, and I just have the bird left, which I think I'll use this color, which is, what a color is that? Poppy Parade. <clears throat> I clean my brush tip. And just do a quick little bird. Do my inside bird. And now we are ready to assemble this card. So I really like these uh, 
water painters because you can paint like a pro, even if you're not. Um, and it looks really good. So like I said, at this point, you really should spray this with some kind of fixative hairspray or something, but I don't have any down here, so I'm just going to put the card together. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the taller birdhouse on here. And I'm using glue for this. I think it works better. Hopefully there's enough glue left. This one's about empty. Hopefully it lasts me through the video. I'm going to just put it right there so that he's under my bird's feet and center it on my pole. That's why it's good to use glue because you can kind of wiggle it around a little and make it just perfect. And that's my indoor one. Where's my other birdhouse? There it is. So this one's going next to it. Just love how soft this paper is, so pretty. So like I said, this is a month to stock up on your designer series papers. Got they got a great sale going. 15% off. All right, so there's that. And we're going to take this little strip and put it down the right-hand side. Just want to make sure you don't get too much glue or it'll ooze out. goes all the way over here on the right hand side. And then you want to take your other strip and your, um, you want to make sure you're going the right way with the flowers. So this would be the right way. What I did, you can take tear and tape or some kind of tape and put it down the left hand side. You want it to go the full length of your strip there. And then, um, I'll get one of my silicone mats out. Um, you just want to have the ribbon peeking out on the side. This does not work with glue. You really need tape for this. So there, this is some seriously retired stamping up ribbon, but it was the perfect color, so some old girl grain. So that's what I'm using. And I'm just gonna trim it off at the bottom. And now I'm just gonna add some more tape just to hold the ribbon down to the paper. put any on this side so I'm put a little on the other side this strip will never come off ever <laughs> lots of tape <clears throat> alrighty so that looks good and I'm just gonna put it right here on the left hand side make sure you're perfectly lined up because like I said this strips not going anywhere and look it covered up my boo-boo too that's exciting Okay, so there's the front panel done. Um, I didn't put a sentiment on this, but you could easily put a sentiment down here. Um, you could put something like this down here, um, whatever you want, or just stamp something there. All right, and so I'm gonna do the inside. I'm just putting some adhesive on the four corners to tape it to my card base. And so you can see, um, I don't know if you can see on the video, but 
because I did watercolor, it's a little bit warped, and so that's why we did it on a front panel, and we're just going to stick it to the front of the card, and it'll look fantastic. So there you go. First card done. The inside, all we need to do is add a birdhouse, and I'll probably add something there to fix that little boo-boo that I made. So I'm going to use my glue again. Like I said, you don't really need that much glue because you don't want it to ooze out the sides. And make sure you're on the center of the pole, got the bird feet. There, done. Isn't that gorgeous? All right, so that's our first card done. Um, the next card that we're gonna do is a lot of fun. It's a new fun fold that I hadn't seen before so um, to do this you just need a just a quarter sheet a regular base and um, then this is a is um, oh, four inches by 11 inches and then I scored at um, two inches and three and three fourths inches on both sides and so now we're going to do um, a mountain valley fold here like that we're going to fold this in here like this and so it's going to look well yeah i don't know like a canyon or something um, there we go and so i'm going to just take my bone folder and Make myself some nice little creases. I went ahead and just stamped the birds in there. Um, nothing magic about that. And uh, then I took two strips. Oh, I hope I had some. Yeah, yeah, I have two left. All right, I took two strips, which are one inch by four inches. And I put them down the sides here. And so what I really like about this project is that you could, you know, use almost any stamp set with this. It's a really nice layout and um, a really easy fun fold, a really nice wow card. So I have about, I don't know, an eighth inch uh, gap there on the sides and the top, the left the sides and the top bottom. And I'll do the same on the other side. All right, so that goes on my back panel, which is four and a five and a half by four and a quarter. And then this will just go centered on that. My little mechanism, yes, yeah, so you just want to eyeball it, make it the same on the left and the right, and so that's what it looks like. All right, so pretty quick, huh? And so you could write in here or you could write in the back, um, whatever you want to do. Put those pastels away. All right, so now. <clears throat> I'm going to bring back the Stamparatus and show you how I did the birdhouses. Let's see if we can go this way. So I went ahead and just put them on. I lined it up there and put them on. And so now I just have to figure out where my paper goes, which it looks like it's going to go. A little bit this way, maybe there. So you can see if you use this technique with the Stamparatus, you could really crank out a bunch of these cards now. Um, 
but I'm just going to crank out one on the video. Of course, the nice thing is, too, is, like I said, if you don't get a nice crisp image the first time, you can re-ink it and do it again. Uh, but I got a beautiful image, so I'm not going to do that. And so then all that remains is to put the poles on and a bird on top. So let me do that real fast. Here's the bird. good. I'm sure there's the pole. Can't find them. All right, so I think I will, gosh, this is wet. I don't want to get water on my project, so let me wipe that off. Okay, so now I am going to, what I'm trying to do is line this pole up with the side. Let me line up this whole paper so that it looks good. There we go. All right. So really you're just eyeballing it and make sure you go straight down and straight up. A little bit of water in there, so it'll dry, though. There's that one. And... That one. Okay, perfect. use this one because it's already dry so I already did it all right so now I'm gonna pull out my stamping blends which are alcohol markers and they're really beautiful I'm gonna start with um, the center birdhouse I colored in pool party which is the same color as this paper pool party um, so I'm going to start with my light pool party, and I'm going to use the brush side. And when you're using your stamping blends, you should be holding it at a 45 degree angle and just lightly brushing so that you don't ruin your tip on your stamping blend. So I went ahead and just colored the whole thing in this light pool party and then I came back with my darker pool party and to give it some shading or I didn't do the roof I just did the birdhouse so there's my light pool party now I'm going to take my darker pool party and just give it a little bit of shading which I kind of did some over here here and here and I did the bottom and this little, I don't know what it is, a stand or something. And that's it. Pretty, huh? And I kind of got sloppy over here, so I'm going to use my color lifter to fix it. This is a color lifter. Kind of pulls up little mistakes, which I kind of got some extra color over there that I don't want. So there we go. That'll dry and look good okay I'm probably gonna have to come back in all right I'm gonna go ahead and do all right so I use cinnamon cider on the one that looks like a word woodpecker house to me well, I don't know what do I know someone could probably tell me what that is but yeah so yeah this is my light cinnamon cider which is an in color for 
last year, I believe. And I really should be using the brush side, but I already started using the tip side, so that's all right. All right, and then I'm gonna come in with my darker, dark cinnamon cider, and I'm gonna do the base down here. So it's just a shade darker, but it's really beautiful for shading. And when it first goes on, it kinda is darker, but then it lightens and softens. So, but there's also something you can do to soften it even more, and I'll show you that. So there, see it's kind of choppy a little bit, <clears throat> but if you take your original light one and just smooth over the line, um, it'll soften that line. So that it looks more natural. And yeah, I wanna go back over this side a little, this looks a little funny. <coughs> okay. <coughs> it's dry down here. I don't have any water. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> All right, I'm gonna use my Just Jade, the light one, to do this other birdhouse. And I did the door in Cinnamon Cider, so I'm not gonna do the door in Just Jade. This is also, I can't remember if this is, I don't think this is an end color. Yeah, and I did the base in Cinnamon Cider. All right, so that's good enough. I'm gonna take my darker Just Jade and Give it a little bit of shading. Okay. Take my cinnamon cider. I'll use the dark one. And do the base and the door. Actually, I'll do the gables. I think I'll do the door on my light cinnamon cider. Missed a spot. I think I'll do this little shadow in the dark. And this little footrest. And then I'm gonna use the light. Hopefully, oops, I just did it backwards. I just used the dark. Eh. All right, fine, we'll do it backwards. Now, since it was a light, I could have just gone over it with the dark, but this looks kind of pretty too, so I think we'll just leave that. I like that. And I also did the bird in Cinnamon Cider. So I'll use a light one for that, though. Just sort of gave him a red head and a red breast. Well, it's not really red, a cinnamon cider, but anyway. All right, and then I used um, light gray granite for the roof. Once so again, holding it at a 45 degree angle and just lightly brushing. I like this center birdhouse. It kind of looks like a pagoda or something. I don't know. I think I'll do the poles and the light gray granite too.
And then I'm going to take my dark gray granite. I'm going to use a fine tip and just do a little bit of shading so that it looks more realistic. And I'm going to take the light and just kind of smooth that out again. It'll soften the line there when it dries. So there's just a little bit of shading. You know what? I think I'm going to do my poles in dark. They, they need to stand out a little more. So I'm using dark gray granite. I'm just going over the lighter. That, I like that better. That looks better. And then finally, the bird, I'm going to use... Um, light crumb cake for the rest of the bird. All right. So we also have two little birds that we're going to cut out. So I'm going to go ahead and color them in light crumb cake. light cinnamon cider now and just do kind of his head and the breast and I'm going to take the crumb cake again and just go over the whole thing to kind of smooth that line a little blend it I guess maybe it's there that makes it softer it's not so harsh and then you want to get some really good paper scissors. I really like these, so. And cut, fussy cut your birds out. So, I mean, you can see this is a little bit of a labor of love, but what I like to do when I'm watercoloring is um, just make a bunch of these stamped up and then, you know, if I'm waiting at the doctor's office or um, watching a movie, I can sit and color uh, during that. I like to multitask. And so um, so, you know, you could do quite a few if you wanted to. Or just do one, but it's really a beautiful card. And the birds cut out pretty easy. There we go. So there's the two birds. All right, now we're ready to finish this. I did a panel of cinnamon cider, which is uh, three and... Well, let's see what is this, because I think that's not quite right. Um, all right, so this is 3 and 5 eighths square, and so this would be 3 and 3 fourths. Yeah, that's not right, is it? Do it down here. Yeah, 3 and 3 fourths square. This is 3 and 5 eighths. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and tape that down. And so you can see when you use the markers that it does bleed through, which is why you always want to just have some kind of panel uh, behind it so that it doesn't, you know, look bad. In this case, we're using the cinnamon cider, and I'm going to put that panel behind I already got my bird here. I'm going to put a bird right here. So I'm going to get a little bit of glue for that. Or you could use a glue dot um, if you wanted to. So you 
It's going to go right here on the ledge. Looking in that birdhouse, wondering how his babies are doing. And the other one, I already had, went ahead and stamped and cut this out, which is uh, from <coughs> that die, which is, uh, it's not at my fingertips, but anyway, I use it a lot, so I'm sure you've seen it before. Um, and I took a little piece of retired twine and made a little bow. And you can cut off the rest of the tail. Oopsie. This really works best with a glue dot, so. Although I think I literally did use glue on my sample card, but really glue dots work better for bows. And I'm gonna put that right here on the pole, about mm, three quarters of the way up. Like so. And I put the little birthday wishes Right here, kind of, let's get underneath there, kind of sticking off a little bit, maybe like that. And I put the last bird down here. Cute, cute, cute. All right, so now this just goes on the right or left panel. I put it on my left panel um, to make sure I didn't get tape too far over. I put the tape on here, but you wanna make sure when you do that that you don't get too close to the edge or people will see your tape. So you just wanna put it in a little bit. That's probably too far, but whatever. there. And I'm going to put another piece of tape up here, but not too close to the top. And maybe one down the center. There, that looks good. <clears throat> and I'm going to now just push it all shut and hover till it looks good. Push it down and the card is done. Very cute, huh? You could, if you wanted to, take um, your dark pool party and color these little birds inside if you wanted them to stand out a little. I just thought it made them pop a little, so that's nice. And that's done. All right, so second card is done, and now we're on to the third card, which is kind of like a patchwork quilt. <clears throat> I took a piece of cardstock and scored it down the middle. And we're gonna build the card this way. Um, first thing I wanna do is punch, the, stamp the birdhouses. Gotta see where I put them, there they are. They're stuck to my stamp apparatus, so let me get them out. Get the box out. One. Can't even see what I'm doing. Sorry, picking up my birdhouses. I'm ready. Get. Did 
I do that backwards? I did. That was kind of stupid. Oh, I did them all backwards. All right. I used this fun punch for this card um, and punched all these little guys out. And first thing we're going to do is stamp the three. Three white ones. So, all right, let's do that. Okay, that's good for now. Let me clean these real fast. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just color these while I've got them here. And I use my stamping blends for these. Um, how I put it on my card. I kind of liked the shorter one in the middle and the two taller ones. This one's kind of facing this way and this one's kind of facing that way so they're sort of looking at each other and that's how I did it. So, um, all right, I went ahead, I did um, Misty Moonlight for this one on the left. This is the light Misty Moonlight. And in case you're wondering why I chose these colors, I just chose three colors that were in the designer series paper. And if you look at the back of the package, it'll tell you like what colors are in that paper. So that's how I, I just picked three colors for the birdhouse that kind of look good together and were in the paper. So there we go. Dark Misty Moonlight, and, I mean, sorry, that was light, and now I'm going to take the fine tip on the dark, color the base, and those little holes, just do a little line work here, shading. And now I want to take my light one again, the brush tip, and just kind of go over that to soften the edges. All right, that looks good. All right, so that's it with that one. Um, now I'm going to use um, Mint Melody. You know, I'm going to try something. I'm going to try to do the shading first. And then come in with the light one. I was just thinking about that as I did my last one, that maybe it would work better to do it that way. So there's my shading first. And now I'm going to do the light mint melody. And just go over the whole thing. Yeah, 
That works better. Yeah, nice. Okay, there's that one, and I used Daffodil Delight for the right one. So I'm gonna do my shading first. <clears throat> It'd be fun to have a house that had gables like this. I think I'll do the door in the darker. So it sticks out a little. All right, so there we go. And now I'm going to come in with the light, Daffodil Delight, brush side, and just blend it all together. Perfect. Right there. Okay, now I'm going to do the roof. For the roof, I used um, Smoky Slate. And I'll do a little bit of shading first with the dark Smoky Slate. I'm gonna do this gable in dark. I think I want to. There. <clears throat> and I'm gonna do the light smoky slate. I'm just going right over the dark to soften that line. There. Oops, I, did, I forgot. <laughs> I got three roughs, not one to do. All right, so let me go. I should have done them all at the same time. I forgot. All right, so let me do the dark here. I'm going to do just do the edges on this one. This one, I'm going to do the lines. <clears throat> and I'm going to do that little footrest. And taking the light brush side, and I'm going to finish the other two roofs. So, if you've never made a patchwork quilt, this is your opportunity to quilt like a boss and quickly, right? Because quilts take forever. I understand. I've never made one, but um, yeah. So what you want to do, first of all, is just lay this out. Um, I would go ahead and tape down the three white panels. So I'm going to start um, with the left one. I'm just leaving a little gap up there at the top. And maybe a quarter of an inch, really not quite a quarter, maybe a quarter. Yeah, probably a quarter inch there and an eighth of an inch there, if I had to guess. So I'm doing the left panel and I'm doing the right panel. I'm also just not putting a ton of tape on in case I want to reposition. I would not use glue at this point because It'll never come up otherwise. All right, so there's my left and right, and then I'm going to center my center one. And 
Yeah, I'm just eyeballing it. All right, so um, these two here, you want to get the one that has yellow on the back and the one that has purple on the back. And so that'll be the purple is the left, the yellow is the right. I mean, you can do it any way you want, but this is how I did it. There. And there. All right. Um, so these two panels are actually the same one. Um, they have the pale papaya on the back. And I just cut them down the middle. So I put one over here and one over here. So let's do that. This would probably work better with a tape runner, but mine's not handy, so this is what we're doing. So there, that goes there. This one goes over here. Okay, now for the bottom ones, you want to take your one that's green on the back um, and I cut it right down the middle. And this one's going to go here. This one will flip over and go up here. So yeah, this is going to stick out of the top. We're just going to trim it down. So you just want to kind of keep the same uh, width all the way around. It's not perfect, but yeah, it's not bad either. I mean, this handmade card's not supposed to be perfect, right? And we'll put this down here. All right, so there's the green one. And then uh, this one is the pale papaya back and once again I just cut it down the middle and I'm going to put one down here and flip this over pale papaya and put it up here so let's do that and like I said I'm going to be trimming this when I'm done with my scissors There we go. And then last, you want to take your last one that has yellow on the back and you want to cut it down the middle like the other ones and then you want to cut it vertically. So this is what it'll look like. You can see that. All right, so this one goes here and these go up here in the corner. So I've been wanting to make one of these cards. I've seen other people do them, and uh, mostly they go portrait, not landscape, but I wanted to do the birdhouses on here, so uh, I did it the other way, but I really like how it turned out, so. All right, so this one can go here. And that one goes there on the other side. All 
Okay, so now I'm just going to take my scissors and trim it. Being careful not to cut my cardstock, my green card base, that would not be good. So there's the top, and we'll do the bottom. Voila. Okay, and then the last thing I want to do is do a sentiment which I should have done in advance, but I didn't, so sorry. Um, that looks good. Pull out my hello. You're almost done. Do it up there. <clears throat> Bring in my cutting machine real fast. on here I've got the base plate which is the one plate the two plate and the three plate put the paper down in my die and we'll cut her out which of course you can't see because I'm too close on the camera but I don't really feel like adjusting it right now so Sorry about that. Get this out of here. All right, so there it is. And I'm just going to put it on here with two little pieces of ribbon, which I somehow managed to bury. There they are. Okay, cool. And I just... I don't know. I just wanted a little bit of ribbon on here, but I couldn't figure out how to make it look good. So I just decided to do a little X with some retired Daffodil Delight ribbon. I have so much ribbon, I just need to start using it up. And of course, that glue dot went in a bad location. So, hmm. We'll go like this. Durr. Perfect. Let's do another little piece of glue dot right there in the center. And there, isn't that cute? I'm even on the camera I am. Okay, good, cool. And put another glue dot on the back. And before I put this on, where are my scissors? kind of frayed my ribbon, so I just want to make it look good. There. And I put that down here. There we go. Third card. So, in the recap, there's the first one we did. 
and the second one, which was a fun fold. This one had some little birds on the inside. And the last one, kind of like, there we go. So thanks for joining us today, uh, my virtual club. Uh, we started this month meeting in person again. Uh, it's the third Friday of the month. I'll keep doing virtuals for a while. Um, maybe I'll keep doing them, but um, we are meeting the third Friday of the month. So if you're interested, uh, you can private message me, text me, um, and come join us. It's a lot of fun. And uh, thanks for joining me today. See y'all later. Bye.